Hey, my name is Ryan Earnhardt from creativesoundlab.tv, where audio recording is an art form. Well, today we're going to be talking about the Glenn Johns technique. Now, this technique, I kind of, um, you know, I kind of blew it apart a couple years ago, uh, talking about the one fault about the Glenn Johns that nobody talks about. You know, I think I had a pretty good point on on what I was, what I was getting after there. But there is a lot of value to this technique. Um, it just can be kind of difficult to pull it off and do it well. So I want to do my best shot of pulling this off. Now the Glenn Johns technique really does pay to have a good room when you set this up. Any slight thing in your room that's a little funny, it all of a sudden makes Glenn Johns, I think, a lot harder to pull off. And to be honest, it's the one technique that I've wasted just a lot of time trying to set it up, trying to get it sound good. I've heard other people do it, I think it sounds great, but I do notice that they're in even larger room than I have. Uh, my room here is 15 feet wide, uh, 25 feet deep, and 12 feet high. It's a pretty decent sized room, probably about the size of a living room or family room in you know, an average house or apartment. Um, but the idea here is that a small room creates more variables, and having two microphones that are at different heights different perspectives to the drum. We even think of the snare drum. Okay, one mic is at a 90 degree to that snare. One mic is at the top of the snare looking down. So there's tons of different variables that Glenn Johns really introduces, but I'm gonna go ahead and teach you the technique anyhow because it is just a classic technique. It's just one of those things that, hey, you know, you gotta know it to know your stuff. So we're gonna be talking about the Glenn Johns technique today. Let's get started. So the Glenn Johns technique really starts with the mono overhead. It's really important to understand this and take your time with this. You wanna set up a single overhead microphone looking down and you wanna to try to really get a good balance of the kit. Most importantly, the snare drum. You really wanna get a full sound out of that snare without being uh, too loud on either a crash cymbal that may be nearby or other you know, ride cymbals and things, you really want to focus in on getting a nice balance of the kit, but most importantly, the snare drum. And this mic looks down. Usually I have the microphone above the front rim of the snare drum. Sometimes it's right above the snare. Sometimes it's more on the inner rim of the snare drum or above the drummer's knee. Uh, so experiment with this and really find a good balance of the kit. Now once we know where this mic needs to be for a great sound, now we can go on to the second microphone. Now this second microphone is positioned low and out to the side. Um, it is roughly the same distance as the snare, although uh, many modern engineers, they prefer to measure it. Uh, so the way that I do this is I measure the microphone that we know is set right to capture generally the whole kit fairly well. We measure that to the center of the snare drum. And then from here, I make an arc with a guitar cable or a string and arc it over to find the distance that this mic needs to be. A lot of times I'll have to move it a little bit in or a little bit out. We're using a, a microphone that usually would be for an overhead. We're placing it on the floor tom, maybe a little bit further out. And then during mix time, we can have a slight separation of these two mics to get a really cool sounding stereo image of the drum kit. Okay, so this example is just the top microphone. Okay, now let's listen to the bottom side microphone. Okay, now the two microphones together.
Now this technique usually is topped off with a kick drum microphone, sometimes in, sometimes outside of that kick drum. And a lot of modern engineers like to put um, some sort of mic on the snare drum just to fill out the snare sound, just to make sure that we're getting a nice strong sound. And now we'll add in the snare drum microphone. Now the panning on these two overheads is just slightly apart, about halfway out. So one thing that's easy to forget to do with the Glenn Johns technique is really just kind of a final step that glues everything together in a really nice way. And I'm gonna demo that for you in just a second. Uh, I do have a free download for today. It's a drum recording quick start guide. It features just techniques that work. Uh, they're easy to pull off and they sound good. So it's a free download if you'd like to pick that up. Now really this technique is really about just gain staging the preamp. Uh, so instead of using just the gain that you need, uh, which is what we've been listening to, you can actually push up those preamps um, 10, 20%. We're actually gonna go farther than that. It really helps the technique sound actually quite good. So we're gonna do that today and really see what it sounds like. Okay, so I think that the pushed preamps really, really sounds cool. One thing I didn't like is, you know, the floor tom's kind of weak. Um, and this is one of those things, you know, you find something that you don't like, it doesn't sound full. So, I mean, what do you do? You move the mic, but then that introduces more problems and now something isn't quite right. So this technique can be kind of difficult, I think. There's techniques that are, I think, more repeatable and more consistent. I have a video in the future that solves that floor tom issue. Uh, Cause I've always noticed the high tom sounds good, but the floor tom always sounds kind of weak. And I have something for you that, that will fix that. So anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this today. Just a general overview of the Glenn Johns. And also kind of an extra tip to push those preamps to glue these, um, the two overheads together. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below.